Hi and welcome to another video. This time let's talk about COC, which is a plugin to Vim. This plugin, as they claim over here, make your Vim or NeoVim as smart as VS Code. And of course, the plugin itself doesn't do it, it uses the language server. So it brings features of different languages and then makes it possible to work with a language, like in VS Code, giving you code completion, giving you error notifications and lots of other stuff. In this video, we will look into the documentation of COC and also its version for Flutter, an extension for Flutter, and then we will also have a look into the setup that I have prepared for my own configuration. This is the repository, coc.nvim, and we can use this repository as a plugin to Vim using, for example, a Vim plug. So in the quick start data, you first install Node, and it has to be 14.14 or higher. After that, use your preferred plugin management tool. I'm using Vim plug as here, so I can copy and paste this line to my configuration, and this will work for me. Here they give you hints on how you can include different branches and use maybe the most recent version on the master or maybe the latest stable version on release. Personally, I always recommend you to use the release version unless you're working on the plugin itself. So then, if you added it to your Vim configuration, for example, in case of a Neo Vim, this is the init.vim file, then we have to restart Vim and then we just run this plug install. So after we add our plugin to the configuration of our Vim setup, then we also have to run this plug install to get the plugin installed. Then down here they also show you that we have to add something, which are so-called COC extensions. And we can do it using this command, COC install, and giving it names of the extensions we want. For example, COC JSON will add functionalities to support our development with JSON. And you probably want that because who doesn't work with JSON nowadays? Secondly, they also propose you to add COC TS server, which is TypeScript language server. And this will make your Vim or NeoVim smart about using TypeScript. The other option, rather than installing them manually like this, is to just add this to your configuration, and we will go through that in a moment. Down here, they also give you an exemplary configuration for COC. So if you just include the plugin, then most of the functionality will be accessible through commands. But for example, we would like to instead have a completion on a shortcut with a tab or with enter. And here they propose you how you can configure it. By no means you have to copy all the configuration, but read all the descriptions and see why different settings may be needed for your Vim. And then also check out what all these kinds of things do. For example, this is responsible for completing your code when you're pressing tab on your keyboard. If we jump down here, we have specified different shortcuts that we can use later. For example, if you use this shortcut, then you will go to the previous diagnostics error or notification. And then if you use this shortcut, then we will go to the next diagnostic error or notification. If we tap GD on keyboard, then we will trigger the COC definition. For GY, we will trigger COC type definitions. If we type GI, then we will get a list of implementations of some type. And for GR, we will get a list of references of that type. Over here is a definition of how to show a documentation. So if you hover some type in Vim, then you can show documentation this way. There is also plenty of other options, so if you want to set up your COC and learn how to use it, then check out all the other options over here as well. If we want to add support of a language server for Dart, we can use the COC Flutter extension. In order to add it, we can just use the COC instance OC Flutter or we can add it to our configuration. This extension comes with a lot of handy commands to deal with Flutter. Like for example, we can use COC list Flutter SDKs to show all of the Flutter SDKs that are installed. If you use COC list Flutter devices, then you will get a list of all the devices correctly connected. And then we will also need everything to run Flutter to perform a hot restart, hot reload, and so on. Down over here, you can see these commands listed. So you get flutter run to run flutter, flutter attach to attach the to an application that is already running. You have even flutter create over here, flutter doctor, flutter upgrade, flutter pubcat, and so on. Over here is a list of server commands. So in case your um, application is already running, then you can quit the application or quit the server. So the connection with the application you can detach it, you can hot reload, hot restart, screen, you can make a screenshot, and so on. All in all, everything that VS Code or Android Studio will give you, also you can have in Vim by using the COC Flutter extension. Okay, but now let's have a look into my setup and how does it actually work. And also let's try to go through a couple of these different actions that we've seen documented. Now let's have a look into my configuration and also later on, 
into how to use it. First of all, let's go to config and then I have my configuration at config.config.neovim Let's open it up. Now let's start with my init vim. Let's get the directories with nerd tree. First of all, let's see into the plugins definition. So in my plugins.vim, on the very top I have support for that with this dart lang dart vim plugin, which is taking care of the language server. Then I'm adding the coc and vim over here, and I'm using the release branch, which is supposed to be stable. Next, in the modules directory over here I have coc.vim, which is my coc configuration. You can see that I don't have the settings of the Vim itself here, I moved them just to another file, which is the settings.vim. So the settings that you've seen before in the documentation, they are somewhere over here in these settings. So here you can see that I've copied the code for handling tab. I've also made it work with util. I also made it work with util snippet so that it doesn't collide. And then I also have basically copied over all the shortcuts that they have defined in the exemplary configuration. So for example, I have the shortcuts for diagnostics, definition, references, and so on. And also for documentation over here. Here is a shortcut for renaming something. And then down here we also have a couple of other important shortcuts for this diagnostics um, window and so on. And in the end you can see I have this coc global extensions variable. And this variable defines which of the plugins or extensions to the coc I want to have installed by default. This is helpful because if I will move to another device or to another system, then I don't have to install everything manually again, but it will be installed for me already with the plugin. COC itself comes with a bunch of other commands as well, which are just to help with COC itself. Here is my Flutter Playground project. And on this project, I will try to show you a few things that we can do with COC. So first of all, we have commands. If we type in COC and to tap right now, you can see these are all the commands that are COC related. Let's try for example coc command. So now when I press tab we can see all the different commands that are available and these commands are added depending on what kind of extensions I have installed. So you can see I have some commands for git over here, I have some for editor. I can for example do editor actions.pick color and I honestly don't know what it does <laughs> at this point. But there is plenty of commands already defined over here. Some for snippets also. But down here you can also see that there are some for flutter. And these commands were added with the COC Flutter extension. So let's try some Flutter commands. There we go. So I have Flutter dot and now I have a couple of options. I can for example run the application with run. Let's do that. And this is now started. The application is starting. Of course we don't see anything, but we can open an output window. So if we do again COC command, and now you can see that we have a bit more options because the application was run or started. Then we have this dot dev command as well. And over here you can see plenty of interesting commands that you probably already know what we'll do. So we can hot restart, as we've seen below, hot reload, but also we can have, for example, information for debugging, like debug down render tree. We can do it from Vim as well, no problem at all. But what I'm interested right now in is down here, which is the open devlog. So let's do that. Open devlog. There we go. And here is the output of the application running. In the meantime, the application started over here on Windows. So right now I can also do a hot restart. So again, coc command, flutter, dev, hot restart. There we go. Performing hot restart, restarting application to 241 milliseconds. This was concluded. And because the application just displays a simple text and we didn't see actually that it happened, but it happened, believe me. <laughs> of course, I will not be typing these commands every time so I will not be doing coc command and so on. I have certain shortcuts. So for example, now if I will use the combination of keys leader fq, the application is killed. And you can see my OBS. <laughs> and now in the log over here, you can see that application finished. If I want to start an application, I flash a shortcut, which is leader fa. And this starts the application again. So I don't have to type anything and it's super quick. And for all these commands that you've seen over there, you can create own, your own shortcuts. And now, if you use space A, then you can see a list of all your diagnostic errors in the whole application that is currently opened. So, for example, I can navigate just by pressing enter after I selected it, and it will navigate me to the file where this to-do is. And you can see that this to-do is marked then in the Vim itself. 
So another thing is, if we, let's say we want to rename this implements doc, then there is a shortcut that we've seen before in the documentation, which is leader rn or just rn without leader. And now you down in the bottom of the screen over here, you can see that we can set a new name to it. So let's say that instead of implemented doc, we want to call it implemented doc 22. Okay, so the name was changed. Now COC is also notifying us that different files could be changed in this process. So it works exactly like in AS or in VS Code. So when we change a name, it will also try to change it in every place where this is used. So now we can type in VA to save all of these files. And you can always check with LS all the files and whether they were saved. If a file would not be saved, then you would see a plus over here, which is not. This means that all buffers that were already changed or opened in Vim are currently saved. And COC comes with plenty of this kind of options. So basically everything that you would normally do in your Android Studio or VS Code setup you can do over here. Let's say we have a widget over here, which is the custom pane, and let's say we want to wrap it with another widget. I have a shortcut now, leader aw, on it, and I can wrap it, for example, with another widget or with center. And then I saved it. I have also reformat on save setup, so you can see that when I saved it with semicolon w, then it also reformatted the code for me. Now let's say I want to see where the simulation graph widget is used. So for that we have this gr shortcut that was defined in the documentation. And now I type the gr shortcut and you can see all the places where this is used. And we also have a preview window showing us the actual usage. And now if I press enter, it will navigate me to the file and to the usage. And if I want from here go to the definition, then I have the shortcut gd and we are back at a file with definition. Now let's say that I'm not sure what kind of arguments this custom painter can have. So now I can try capital K and here is my documentation for custom painter and I can check what I can use. And this will work for any type that has the documentation available. There we go. For a simulation we have quite a bit of text. It was also shown now over here. So I think this video will help you to get started with COC and it showcases you that you can do everything in Vim that you need with Flutter. So you can manage your Flutter application that is running, you can manage with your language server over here, you can navigate around just like you would in your IDE. With the exception that everything is customizable over here. So the way your Vim works, every shortcut, every command can be customized, can have aliases and so on to suit your needs and to make it the best for you. I hope this video will help you a little bit of how to set up your own Vim configuration. You can of course use my own Vim configuration, which I try to update as I find some problems with it or something new interesting that I want to add. The link is in the description. And this is by no means everything that COC can do. So as you've seen, there's plenty of mother commands, there's plenty of extensions, and even the Flutter setup itself has plenty of capabilities and plenty of commands to use. So I encourage you to go and research that on your own fervor. But if you like this video, if it helped you in any way, then please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. But for now, I coach you to death and bye bye.